Hello everyone and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host Tyler Callahan and we got quite a bit to talk about. We have a quiet box office domestically, the streaming awards heats up, and of course new updates from Hollywood Studios. Let's start with the box office numbers. So yeah, we had a real quiet weekend at the box office. Opening in first place was a new horror movie from Sony called The Invitation at a whopping $7 million. Yeah, like I said, it was quiet. In second place was Bullet Train with $5.6 million for a total of $78.2 million. Third place was Beast with $4.9 million for a total of $20 million. In fourth place was Top Gun Maverick with $4.75 million with a total now of $691.2 million. And in fifth place was Dragon Ball Super Super Hero with a 78% drop, making $4.5 million for a total of $30.7 million. Yep, this is a weekend we haven't seen since last year. No big releases, so everything is very quiet, which, while a lot of time August is the quietest summer month, uh, this is just deserted. Still, Sony had a horror film open to first place, and thanks to its low budget, is likely to make a small profit at the box office. Beast and Bullet Train are holding on, uh, but they're not gaining much from the quiet weekend with no competition. As for Dragon Ball, well, it fell to what has become the typical anime film rule, dropping 78%. Like other anime films, it made a big splash, but most of the fans went opening weekend and has not developed a lot of word of mouth. I was hoping it could possibly hit 50 million domestic by the end of its run, but that's very unlikely now, probably 40 million, maybe 45 million. Now before we talk about the other numbers from the weekend, we got some other box office news to talk about. The Cinema Foundation is doing a National Cinema Day over Labor Day weekend, specifically September 3rd. During that day, all tickets in participating theaters are $3 per person. Does not matter what film you watch or in what format, all tickets are three dollars each. Not only that, but the foundation has gotten a lot of theater chains to sign up to it, including AMC, Regal, Cinemark, and Alamo Drafthouse. Some theaters, like AMC, are also offering a special discounted combo of popcorn and soda as well. I think this is a great idea for theaters to get a boost of customers, and I think audiences will love the low price. The one issue I see with this is announcing it just a week beforehand doesn't really leave much time to advertise it. This also lines up with the re-release of Spider-Man No Way Home, more fun edition, so it'll be interesting how many tickets are actually sold next weekend. For China, we have a repeat winner with New Gods Yang Jin staying in first place with 13 million for a total of 44 million. In second place was Moon Man with 12.3 million for a total of 423.9 million. Third place was Warriors of Future with 7.5 million for a total now of 89.2 million. In fourth place was Minions The Rise of Crew with 6.5 million with a total now of 24.6 million. And lastly in fifth place was Bell which made its debut with 1.5 million. So not much to say here. Bell failed to make a splash at the box office because it's an anime film from last year which finally had its Chinese debut. As for the other films that were already released, they held well, and mm, that's about it. One thing to note is that this week, Disney presented Avatar The Way of Water footage for members of the China Film Group, and James Cameron also sent a message to them thanking them and talking about the film itself. Clearly, Disney is pulling out all of the stops to get the group to approve the film over the next few months ahead of its December release. That's not surprising as Avatar made it. 200 million dollars in China back during its original run which for 2009-2010 was a lot and then you know it also made another 50 million and it's re-released last year if Avatar 2 wants to hit 2 billion dollars it's gonna need a China release period personally I think that it will get approved Uh, with this China can easily say hey look see we are allowing Disney movies to show in theaters point to Avatar 2 Uh, you know just kind of shying away from the fact that they're just banning Marvel movies, you know? Because right now, they've been releasing movies from a bunch of other studios. Disney has been a bit like, but look, they approved Free Guy, right? So if they were just approving more of the 20th Century Fox Disney films, Avatar fits right there. For worldwide numbers, Minions The Rise of Gru made $15 million for a worldwide total of $868.9 million. 
It won't hit a billion, but it's likely to hit 900 million. Nope made 8.3 million for a worldwide total of 148.7 million. Bullet Train made 9.4 million and is now at 173.6 million. At this rate, it will definitely hit 200 million worldwide and can probably finish around 220 million. Dragon Ball Super Super Hero made another 4.2 million and is at 69.2 million. DC League of Super Pets made 4.4 million with a total now of 146.5 million. Lastly, Jurassic World Dominion is hovering just under a billion, now at 990.4 million. Moving on to news in Hollywood, let's go to Warner Brothers right off the bat. First off, DC fandom will not be happening this year. The past two years, it has been the new event Warner Brothers and DC made to make the announcements that they would normally make at Comic-Cons, but could not due to the pandemic. As for why, well, because those events are back, uh, that's exactly why they're not having it. From a DC spokesperson, Quote, with the return of in-person events, Warner Brothers Discovery is excited to be able to engage with our fans live at numerous Comic-Cons around the world, and we will not be scheduling DC fandom for 20, 2022, end quote. This is not too much of a surprise for two reasons. First, Comic-Con events have come back basically at 100%, and also they have been dealing with their upcoming DC movies being pushed back more and more. So unless they have teaser trailers for The Flash and Aquaman and new movie announcements ready, they have nothing to offer. Also, with their parent company looking to cut costs where they can, why would they spend money on a virtual event that has nothing to offer? Just doesn't make sense. We have a new casting update for Joker 2, and it is a Deadline exclusive. They are reporting that Brendan Gleeson has joined the film, uh, though it is not clear yet what role he would be playing. Uh, no other news at the moment, just that it is still expected to start production in December. I think Mr. Gleason is a great actor, so personally, I love this news, and I'm still looking forward to the film. In not good news for Warner Brothers, it looks like Legendary might be looking for a new partner. Recently, the deal between the two studios, where Warner Brothers would distribute and co-finance Legendary films, has expired, and Legendary is looking at all options moving forward. While an offer for a new contract has been made from Warner Brothers, apparently Paramount and Sony are also interested in making a deal with them. If they were to sign with a different studio, it would be a potential blow to Warner Brothers, as they might lose out on a potential Dune 3, future MonsterVerse films, and other films Legendary are working on. Though this should not be a surprise, while they reached an agreement on the HBO Max issue from last year with Godzilla vs. Kong and Dune, Legendary were furious at the time, and were considering going to court. So it's not surprising they would hesitate to re-sign straight away, besides with most studios having or supplying content to a streaming service. Legendary are kind of in a buyer's market right now, especially if they can offer up a Dune 3 and MonsterVerse films. Uh, studios will go out of their way to sign a deal with them. That next story is not strictly Hollywood or streaming, but it's still noticeable. This week, Warner Brothers Discovery announced that they have finished their deal with BT Group over BT Sport. This was announced a few months ago. But now the company owns 50% of BT Sport, with BT Group still owning the remaining 50%. Along with this, they will assume operation of BT Sport and will down the road merge it with Eurosport for a new sports offering for the UK and I Republic of Ireland. If you are either in the UK or Ireland and have BT, you will likely have Discovery Plus now as well. As for this joint venture, right now it is set to go till at least 2030, but could extend beyond that. Again, while this is not really Hollywood, focused, this is changing up a good part of how sports is accessed and watched for a lot of people. Getting back to proper Hollywood news, Matt Shackman is leaving the new Star Trek film. The upcoming fourth film in the series for Paramount no longer has a director and will need to find a new one. Paramount did release a statement on the news saying, quote, Matt Shackman is an incredibly talented filmmaker and we regret the timing didn't align for him to direct our upcoming Star Trek film. We are grateful for his many contributions, are excited about the creative vision of this next chapter and look forward to bringing it to audiences all around the world. Rumor is right now he is close to signing on to be the director of Fantastic Four, and we might get confirmation on that at D23. Still for Paramount and the Star Trek film, this is not great, and at this point I'm surprised they have not announced the delay for the film. They still have it listed coming out next December, with no director, and as far as we know publicly, a lot of the cast is still not signed on yet. Like, I'm looking forward to it, but the, the handling for this film has been a train wreck. Small update on casting for Megalopolis. The film of Francis Ford Coppola is self-producing for just under $100 million. The cast now includes Aubrey Plaza, Shia LaBeouf, Catherine Hunter, 
and Jason Schwartzman. Production is still set to begin this fall. We have another exclusive from Deadline, and that is a new A24 film is in the works. It's called Dream Scenario, and will be directed by Christoph Bolgi, and will star Nicolas Cage. A24 will fund and produce the film along with Square Peg. They have produced other films before, including Hereditary and Midsommar. Besides the film being a comedy, not much else is known right now. But for me, all you gotta say is Nicolas Cage and comedy, and I'm in. A24 being behind it, just a ter- cherry on top. Another exclusive from Deadline, and that is MGM bought a film. They have bought most of the distribution rights for The Beekeeper, an action film from Miramax that stars Jason Statham and will be directed by David Ayer. MGM bought the theatrical distribution rights for the United States and for a few international markets. Filming begins sometime in September. From what it sounds like, it sounds like a regular Statham action film, which isn't bad, uh, but nothing exciting. We got casting updates for the GameStop stock film, uh, making it the third straight exclusive from Deadline. The film is called Dumb Money, based on a book about the GameStop short squeeze from early 2021. It's being produced by Black Bear Pictures, and now has a solid cast to it. The actors that have joined the film include Seth Rogen, Paul Dano, uh, Sebastian Stan, and Pete Davidson. As of now, the plan for the film is to start filming in October, and for distribution, look to sell the rights to it at the Toronto International Film Festival. Black Bear will be funding the project completely. GameStop story is a very interesting one, and I'm curious how Hollywood is going to portray the people involved. Cast-wise, at least, it's really solid, so for now, I'm looking forward to it. Finally, for news in Hollywood, we got a trailer released for Weird, the Al Yankovic story. This is the Weird Al film for the Roku channel, starring Daniel Radcliffe. Besides being released on the Roku channel in November, it will make its debut at the Toronto International Film Festival. And we start off VOD Premium with Netflix, and let's do a quick mention of the Nielsen streaming ratings, where Stranger Things was in first place again with 1.42 billion minutes of streaming. For those curious, Prey had 583 million minutes of streaming in its opening week. Still, this shows even a month after season 4 finished, Stranger Things still has a lot of staying power. As for new movies in the world of Netflix, we have a new one starring Lindsay Lohan, it's called Irish Witch, and is a romantic comedy. No word on when production starts. We have an update on the action thriller Carry On, thanks to Deadline. They are reporting that Jason Bateman has joined the cast, which is being led by Taron Edgerton. I was already looking forward to this movie, and with Bateman joining it, makes it even better. Hopefully, it comes out sometime next year. And in another exclusive from Deadline, we have an update on Beverly Hills Cop 4. Production has actually started and has a new title, Beverly Hills Cop Axel Foley. Along with this, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Taylor Page has joined the cast. I'm glad production has finally started on this film, but the title of it? That ain't great. Like, why are they trying to avoid saying it's the fourth film? And if you're giving it a new new title, why is it the main character's name? Not really original. Uh, Another exclusive from Deadline, where in an unusual move, Netflix is allowing a movie to be sold elsewhere. It's an animated film called Catawampus, and is being directed by Gore Verbinski, with the film being about outer space felines. Deadline is saying Netflix has allowed the creative team to try and sell the movie elsewhere, but right now it's not clear why. I think it's likely due to them needing to cut costs, and they don't think this is a film that will either bring in a bunch of new subscribers, or keep a lot of current ones. Also, overall, Netflix has been changing their plans on animation a bit, so we need to see what the plan for those films are going forward. I am curious how this works. Like, if if the creative team can't sell the film, does Netflix have to keep it and pay for it, or who gets paid, or... it's 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 a unique situation, I feel like. We have a small update on the ad supported tier for Netflix with Bloomberg reporting that the company has narrowed down the cost of the new tier and they are planning for it to cost between seven to nine dollars per month. As for how many ads would be included, they are reporting it would be about four minutes of ads, some at the beginning, and some in the middle. It is not clear yet if it's a four minutes for a 30 minute episode, hour long episode, a film, or all three. Also from reporting from the Wall Street Journal, it looks like Netflix might be trying to speed up its launch of the ad supported tier in some markets to November to get ahead of Disney's ad-supported tier of Disney Plus in December. So for what Netflix might might cost, I think it's a fair price if it is in HD and supports at least two concurrent streams. If not, it's way overpriced. As for why they want to get ahead of Disney Plus, I take it's because they want to get the advertisers dollars first. You know, if Disney Plus launches for them, then they might spend more money there, less money for them, and all that. Lastly for Netflix, happy birthday. I tried the company this week celebrated turning 25. 
It may not seem like the company is that old, but it was in the DVD renting business for years, way before they pivoted and spearheaded streaming. Next up is Paramount in a move that has been long telegraphed. Paramount Plus and Showtime are merging. As of now, there is a new Showtime section in Paramount Plus that has all of the shows and films available from Showtime. This means for users, they do not have to keep using two separate apps to watch all of the content that they've been paying for, specifically the ones who have signed up for the bundle service. However, this change does mean a price increase if you want both. Right now, there is a discount offer of $7.99 per month with ads and $12.99 per month without ads for Paramount Plus with Showtime, as it's being officially called. After October 2nd, the full price will be $11.99 with ads and $14.99 for ad-free. For people who only want Paramount Plus, that option will still be available at regular prices, and Showtime for now will still be available as a separate service at its regular price. For Paramount, this will for Paramount, this was a long time coming, and it's what they need to do to increase subscribers. This will provide more convenience for its customers, and I think will help shine a light on the content from Showtime. Finally, we finish with HBO Max and House of the Dragon. Right now, it looks like a juggernaut that can't be stopped as it got 10.2 million views between HBO and HBO Max, which is actually a 2% increase from its debut episode. For TV shows, that is very rare to happen. As for the first episode, the company is now saying that it is up to almost 25 million views ratings-wise. This thing is off the charts. The other piece of news for the show, though it's not surprising at all, is that it's been renewed for season 2. That's not really a shock, considering between the reviews and the viewership the show has had, this is exactly what HBO wanted for a return to WrestleWars. This is exactly what HBO wanted for a return to Westeros, and Warner Brothers' discovery is probably overjoyed. And that'll be it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, will you be going to theaters on National Cinema Day? If so, what do you plan on watching? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the page is in the show notes. Thank you for listening. <laughs>